What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Philly Flipper Live channel with your host, me, Paul, the Wawa lover himself, Philly Flipper, back here at the warehouse for another order pool, talk about my week, talk about life kind of style of video. Like always, it is Sunday. This is a little later. It's a Sunday night. I usually do these after the Eagles games. Eagles played at 4 p.m. today. It was a nail biter. My hair became a little more gray watching it, but we won. Eagles won, Phillies won. It's a good time to be a Philly sports fan. Let me tell you what, it's a bad time to be an eBay seller. <laughs> it is Q4, so you would think we would get a lot more sales, um, but we didn't. There was a, this was a really slow weekend. I'm not sure what was going on, but I have I tried to been preaching this to people that reached out to me, preaching to myself to focus on the positives. If we focus on the negatives in this reselling world, we're gonna drive ourselves crazy. Like, cause there's so much negative things we can focus about when reselling. But if we focus on the positives, what is good is happening in their lives, it's gonna help us get by way easier than saying, oh man, I had a slow weekend. So uh, we're gonna focus on positives. Positive is we sold 42 items on eBay this weekend. That's, I guess, a positive. And then we sold like nine or 10 on other platforms. So 50 plus sales going out the door. Wish it was more, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on what's good. <laughs> I'm talking about positives. We're pulling orders from other platforms. We'll talk about eBay right away. During the week, I noticed we got a couple of offers on eBay. And some of those offers were saying, uh, buyer put in like credit card information. So once you accept, you'll get paid right away. I saw that on a couple of offers this week. I was like, whoa. Okay, eBay, looks like maybe some things are finally happening. Maybe the offer is actually going to start doing something. I saw these Durango boots. Um, I got them at the 100 mile yard in Virginia. I think I paid 20 bucks for a bunch of things there. So probably have like $4 or something into them. They sold for $50 on Poshmark. So yeah, I, I, so I, I saw that come in. I was like, whoa, so hopefully... Uh, that becomes a feature for everybody not just for some people and now when you get offers on ebay you actually know people are going to pay it's going to be huge i sold this zilgian symbol case case only i got this on the free private pick a couple weeks ago now it's all on facebook for 25 dollars i figured um anything with the like, musical instruments usually sells people probably you lose cases or their cases get destroyed for their symbols people always want new cases so that was a no-brainer uh, so i figured that was gonna sell didn't think it was gonna sell that fast i sold like, like in two weeks i thought it might, it might sell a little longer but i'm a happy guy and look facebook facebook got some sales here's a couple words you don't hear me say much is i sold something on bonanza yeah i still still have a bonanza store the notification scares me sometimes. I'm like, whoa, what was this? It's Bonanza. I sold the book on Bonanza. The Norse myths. I have no clue where this came from. But sold for $6. So let's go Bonanza, right? <laughs> Bonanza's paying for a foot long. Wait, are foot longs even $5 anymore? I remember when I was like a high school, college age, that was a huge thing. Go to Subway, get a $5 foot long. I like it. I like the... I think it was like like the oven roasted chicken, that was my, that was my go-to for five bucks. Couldn't beat it. With inflation, I think it's probably like eighty dollars by now. But <laughs> back in the day, it was a great deal. I'm looking for a pen now. So yeah, so that's a positive, right? Looks like eBay offers might be a thing. Looks like they might finally help people accountable for their buys, which is going to be great. You can play about that. I, I sold a cross pen. If you guys see cross pens in the wild, definitely grab them. It's something you should be on the lookout for. They sell pretty good. So just like a regular, like a little pen thing. Nothing too crazy about it. I think I spent five bucks on it. Pretty sure that's what I paid. Haven't put the video out yet on uh, on my main channel. But I sold for forty on Poshmark. Poshmark has been pretty good for me this weekend. There's a fifty sale. There's a forty dollar sale. So another video game, uh, Snack that was around 2006. Uh, these actually uh, wrestling games for PS2 hold some decent value. Now, I think Here Comes the Pain is one of the best ones. 
That thing sells for some good money. This right here, I think I paid a buck or two for it. It was for 20 bucks on Facebook. Look at that, two Facebook sales, guys. That's a positive, right? <laughs> so I don't know how this is gonna work out for me. I might have to pay extra shipping on it, but I, I, I don't know, we will see. I sold a ping um, sand wedge. I remember where this came from. I can't imagine having more than a couple bucks into it. If you're selling golf clubs, but if you're new to golf clubs, um, th this is something that is two for two, I would call it my book. Pink is a good brand. This is what you're looking, looking for. Uh, pink is a good brand. You want to be looking for pink stuff. They sell for good money. And a sand wedge is a good club. People always lose their sand wedge, or if they get mad when their ball is in the sand and they don't come out, they could smash their sand wedge and break it. So people are always looking for new sandwiches. I think I sold like three or four of them in the last two or three weeks. I don't think I have any more left. No brainer. That's a no brainer buy, right? That's, that's a good buy. And people want like five bucks or less. That's a no brainer. You take it. So I, 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 <coughs> I crossed it to Poshmark and I sold on Poshmark. And Poshmark is only USPS shipping, what I believe, up to five pounds. It is up to five pounds, but it is too long now for proper USPS shipping. So I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. I'm gonna put it in a USPS tube, ship it out that way. But I don't know if maybe Poshmark is gonna send me back an unpaid bill or something. I don't know. Uh, if you guys, anybody that's watching, have you guys shipped golf clubs or baseball bats since the USPS um, upcharge on those things with Poshmark? Have you guys been dinged? Um, let me know. I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens there. All right, I sold some golf shoes next. So I had these for a while. Actually, we were about to retake the pictures of them uh, this week or next week. I'll tell you guys a little more about that later. But um, I got these last July. So I had these for over a year. I got them Independence Day weekend. They were part of a huge bulk buy I made when I bought everybody, when I bought the ladies whole um, yard sale stuff. She had a yard sale on Independence Day. Nobody showed up. So she made a post saying, come take everything for like 125 bucks, something like that. So I paid her 125. I sold a, um, sold a bike for like 150 the next day on that sale. So I've been a profit ever since. Made probably thousands of dollars. The dollars already in the profit. And as you see, stuff is still selling. And those golf shoes sold for 40 bucks. I sold on Poshmark. And I have another pair of shoes I sold on, for, for, on Poshmark. Some Columbia shoes. These guys right here. I got them my second trip out to Lancaster County for one of their town wives there. That video hasn't been released on my main channel yet. And uh, uh, got these at one of the booths there. I think I paid out for these. I think I paid like five or eight bucks for them. And they sold for 40 on Poshmark. Speaking of, like, uh, speaking of Lancaster County, I got quite a bit of comments about it saying that the people I was shopping with weren't Amish, but were Mennonite. And for all I know, you guys could be right. I really just don't know the difference between Mennonites or Amish. They look the same to me. They dress very similarly. Men have similar beards. They both use horse and buggies. No, I don't think the general consensus of America knows either. So you guys could be right, you guys could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know the difference between the two. But I just can't, but just for YouTube purposes, it's just so much easier to say, I went to an Amish garage sale because people know right away what that means. When you say, I went to a Mennonite garage sale, question mark, <laughs> people will be like, what is that? Who are they? No, it's, it's not going to really appeal to like a general audience, you know? So they, they, they could be Mennonites. You guys could be right. Uh, also, you guys can just call me in the comments the difference between Mennonites and Amish. I don't know. Like, I literally just don't know the difference uh, <laughs> between them. But yeah. So there we go. We'll talk about that. <laughs> All right. I, so now let's get to my eBay sales. So nothing on Macari. Macari had a very slow weekend. Didn't sell anything on uh, Mercari, unfortunately. Uh, but my Mercari balance for now is $1,161. And my Poshmark balance right now is $688. And it's gonna increase by at least a couple hundred dollars with the sales over here. So Poshmark is slowly creeping up, but uh, I have a couple of big sales 
that haven't been accounted for in Macari yet. I sold a huge like Disney Princess Castle for three hundred dollars on Macari this week, so that's probably going to help Macari quite a bit. It's going to help us stay ahead in the race, but it's going to be tight. It's going to be a tight race. I'm looking forward to see um, what happens there. All right, now going to eBay. So the portal cable drill. I've been picking up portal cable stuff whenever I can find it because people sell it for dirt cheap and it has some decent resale value. I think I paid a buck or two for this drill, sold for 18 bucks plus shipping. Can't complain about that. Usually you can buy drill set, you can buy a whole set of tools, a yard sale is like $20, $25, which includes batteries. Um, includes batteries, chargers, drills, other tools. So I don't remember where that one came from. It came from a big bundle deal as well. This is an interesting sale right here. I paid 10 bucks for a set of yard sale. Didn't do any comps on it. I figured $10 was worth it. It's an uh, Olympus putter. Usually those do pretty well. And it came with a cover. Cover looks like this. Anytime something comes with a cover, I'm like, sweet, I know I can make at least a couple bucks on the cover. I'm usually more inclined to buy it. So, funny story is I made two separate listings. One for the putter, one for the cover. The cover sold like two days later. It sold uh, and I got a return on it. The buyer says, just didn't like it. So, I, I have returns on my eBay store. I do returns, buyer pays shipping. So for reasons like just didn't like it, the buyer has to pay the shipping back. And then when I return them, I don't have to return them the original shipping because eBay covers that for me. So I pretty much don't lose on anything. I don't have to pay. I get my shipping there covered, his shipping to me back is covered. So it's pretty much a free return for me, but the buyer I guess is quote unquote happy uh, because he doesn't have to keep the item. So, so guys, just didn't like return on the cover. She got it sent back to me. Uh, I think it was sold for like 12 bucks per ship the first time. I relisted it and then somebody yesterday bought the putter and the cover <laughs> at the same time. So even though I made two separate listings, it's still going to one person. I thought it was pretty funny. I got $100 on the putter. I got $13 on the cover. So 10 into 113, I can't complain. I like always, you're going to be skipping over all the clothes. Like I saw the indigo jeans. I saw the... Nice little J. Jill Merino wool sweater. Got 25 bucks for that. Uh, that came, that was one of the few things I bought last weekend on my trip to New York. I saw the hat. Man, this hat I had for so long. I've, I had this hat before I had this warehouse. This hat right here. I think I paid a buck or two at a Goodwill for it. It sold for $10, but took, what was it, three years? It's been three years, three years to sell, guys. So there we go. That's a good, that's a good buy right there, right? <laughs> Turning two into like eight dollars after fees, after three years. <laughs> yeah, at least it's sold, right? I, I can't again. Focusing on positives here. It's sold. That's great. It's out of here. I don't have to take it to Florida with me. <laughs> I right, sold so the Simon and Garfunkel a track judging on the shipping look it went to canada because people paid more for shipping than actual item uh item sold for five dollars um but let's talk about my week real quick right let's talk about my my week had a pretty good productive week vita came in here helped me out quite a bit um we listed all the clothes that i had so every piece of clothing that i've had in my like possession here is now listed every piece of shoe Every piece of hat is also listed. So this uh, Starbucks tumbler for twenty dollars. I think I got this on my road trip to Kentucky for one twenty-seven. I think I paid like two bucks for it at one of the thrift stores uh, on the way there. So two into twenty, can't complain. So uh, yeah, listed all the shoes, all the clothes, all the hats, and what we started to do, and you guys will see pretty soon, is um. All my old listings, listings that I had for over two years that aren't selling, that I took before Photoshop, uh, that, that I took before Photo Room, and there were terrible pictures, laces were out, and all these terrible things. I went through and started picking them out little by little, and then Vita has been retaking the pictures. I am ending those listings, relisting them, editing the title, editing the price, and hoping to move things uh, that way. I got this like weird little like stone, like hot 
pan holder thing. I don't know what this is, but it's for 20 bucks. I got it at the auction house. I guess I should probably tell you guys what it is since it's in my store. It's a vintage, beautiful, floral, decorative, hand-painted pottery plate. Whatever that means. That's what that was. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we, we did about like, I think we did like 30, 35 pairs of shoes. And one pair sold already in a couple days. So, I would say that's already a success. <laughs> it didn't sell for much. I think it sold for like 15 bucks. We'll, we'll see when we get to it. It's been in my store for over two years. It hasn't sold. And we, we, we did this and one already sold right away. I'm very happy with that. I sold some Sesame Street. I sold some Sesame Street plush. All of these right here. I'll do a better job showing you when we get to the, the thing. Um, going to Israel. Sold for 30 bucks. I got them in a yard sale. They weren't in the greatest of shape. But I saw they were from the 80s. I figured somebody probably wants them. That's what they look like. You got Big Bird. You got Elmo. And you got C is for Cookie. With Cookie Monster. And the powerhouse duo, Bert and Ernie. Uh, so they, I think I paid, I'm, I'm guessing five bucks or less for them at the yard sale. They sold for 30. So the plan now uh, for her and for me, uh, once we list all the stuff that I that I bought, like all the stuff right here, once that is listed, we're going over old listings like those shoes. We're going to have clothes, we're going to have hard goods and redoing them, updating the pictures, updating the title, updating the price so that stuff moves. I think that's also important for people to do, you know, people like, oh man, I keep buying and buying things. I keep buying and buying and my store is growing, but I'm not getting many sales. And the store growing really necessarily isn't a great thing. It just means that you have a lot of stuff that nobody is buying. You know, people like people like ask me like, how many listings do you have? And they think it's like, it's like great that I have like 7,500 listings. And, and like in one, in one way, I guess it is good. 7,500 is a good number, you know, you, you want to have a big store. But if you look at it another way, that means I have 7,500 items that nobody wants because they're still there. So it's really good in those situations to go look over your old listings, see what they're not selling, see if the price is right, update the title, update the pictures, and hopefully they move. Alrighty guys, like always, this is going to be part one of the order pull videos from the weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two later on this week.